This is Pioneer Public, a segment where we introduce the most interesting people on campus to their community. The Globe's Carly Bonk has this profile. Hey Point Park, I'm Carly Bonk, co-features editor at The Globe, and this is our weekly Pioneer Public segment. I'm joined in studio by Professor Edward Striblin. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. So you are part of our forensics department on campus, correct? Yes, I'm in charge of the forensics program here at Point Park University. All right, and uh, you've been into forensics for years now. Um, you were part of the county's uh, Forensics in, Department, correct? In 1990, I started to then the Allegheny County Coroner's Office. Mm -hmm. Over the years, we converted to the Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office. And in 2011, I retired from there as the Chief Forensic Investigator for Allegheny County. Tell me a little bit about uh, what your day-to-day -day involved. The, at the Coroner's Office or Medical Examiner's Office, we were there to investigate death. Uh, roughly eight to nine thousand cases now are being reported to the Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office each year. Of those calls, it's the uh, investigators program to review the case, the demographics of the case, the circumstances, and make the determination if the body needs an autopsy. Once that's determined, then the investigator or one of us would go to the scene. We'd collect the evidence, we'd collect the body, we'd collect any information, and then write a story for the pathologist to review before the autopsy is done the next day. If we felt that there was no need for a full autopsy, then the body would be released to the uh, local funeral home. So it was kind of our determination and the need to find out what we call the cause and manner of death. Okay. And what made you decide to start uh, teaching here? Uh, actually, it was back in the year 2000 when the CSI effect started and Dr. Uh, John Goebbels, who started out the criminal justice program, uh, came down and said, would you teach a course in forensics? We think that people going into criminal justice needed to have an understanding. Uh, juries were getting hip to the aspect of it. They were expecting evidence. So I said, yeah, I'd love to try that. Uh, shortly after starting a class, which was a forensics criminology class, uh, Carlo found out about it and asked me to do a class up there. And then Pitt found out about it, so they asked me to do a class up there. Uh, around 2010, the university decided they wanted to have a full-time forensics program, and that's when I figured I'd take a, you know, an early retirement because I love the aspect of dealing with the students. I've been doing it for some time, talking to them, telling stories, showing pictures, and then the university was nice enough to give us the crime scene house, which is on the fifth floor of Academic Hall, which brought it all to like a physical lab. Okay, and um, students can kind of uh, get bedazzled, I would say, about what they see on television when it comes to crime scene investigations. They shouldn't expect what they see on television, correct? It's like lesson 101 in forensics. Don't believe anything you see on television. It's fantastic that they've highlighted the program, highlighted the aspects of it, but it literally takes 40 people six months of what you see them do on television in 50 minutes. There are so many different job opportunities for people in forensics, they don't see one person doing everything. You can go into toxicology, serology, trace evidence, ballistics, and it gives the people the opportunity to do things that, again, they see on television, but yet bring to real life. So besides the aspect of seeing the pictures of what really happens, the day-to-day -day activities that really happen, it makes it for a very good, I think, educational experience. And speaking of educational experience, you mentioned earlier the crime scene lab. Yes. Tell us a little bit about um, what students do in there. Okay, on the fifth floor of Academic Hall, we have what looks like from the outside a house. Inside there is a staging area, a classroom. Inside there we have three mock rooms set up. There's a living room, a bedroom, and a study. In there, I can literally produce any type of scene I've ever seen, anything I've heard of, anything that might give them an idea of what real life is. Not the 85 people killed in an unusual circumstances, but actually real life scenarios. By doing this, they get to photograph, document, take measurements, collect, see what evidence is really there. The fun part for them is, is after I've built a few scenes for them, they get to build their own. And then from that, they learn not only how it's set up, uh, 
but what questions to ask, how to interview people, how to do what we do, and realize really quickly it takes a lot more than 50 minutes. Yeah. And what made you decide personally to go into this field? Uh, I had no idea. I went to the University of Pittsburgh. I got my degree in chemistry. I then went to medical school outside of the country, uh, American University of the Caribbean, and then I did my clinical training in Chicago. When I came back from Chicago to do my national boards, um, I got married, and then I had to go get a job. So at the time period, there was actually two other people at the governor's office who were foreign graduates taking the national boards. And then for some reason, 22 years later, I was still there. <laughs> uh, it's a fascinating place to work. It's not somewhere that you're going to love to be, but every day is different. Every day is some place you've never thought of or never been to, from the jail to the streets to the houses. So it's a fascinating job, and that's why I stayed there. And you mentioned that you went to school out of the country. Mm -hmm. you were, you've been to Chicago. Do you have a love of travel? I've started to since I retired to do a lot more traveling. I've been uh, all the way out to Oregon this year, uh, Mexico, Canada, uh, the Mediterranean twice, uh, from everywhere from Barcelona to Turkey. Oh, wow. And what, what has been your favorite place so far that you've visited? Ephesus in Turkey. Really? Yeah, I thought the first time I went out that Pompeii was the most interesting because of how vast it was. But then I went to Ephesus that was literally so untouched. I mean, it was so amazing to be up close to a lot of the history. We even saw insignias where the doctors used to work, where there was a pharmacy in by the symbols that were there. There was whole fields of artifacts, and somebody asked, what are these columns? They go, I don't know, they're extras. We just have so much there. It's such a fascinating to see that much history it's just standing there, and you can literally sit on it. Wow. Yeah. I'll have to take a trip there myself yes. sometime. And another um, interesting aspect of... Uh, your life so far. You've recently been married, correct? Yeah, I, I, I got divorced a few years ago and uh, just this last uh, uh, September I got remarried. Very nice. Oh, and yes. uh, where, where did that wedding take place? A travel destination? No, 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 no. <laughs> we actually uh, uh, went away, but uh, can't, uh, the wedding was here in uh, Bethel where I live. Wow, sounds like a, a nice time to have a wedding for oh, sure. Yes. Fall. Well, thank you so much uh, for meeting with us today. Um, students should definitely be interested in checking out um, that forensics lab. Oh, in absolutely, classes. because uh, they just had a meeting, or I was just asked by the school that develops the core classes if we would add the initial class as a core class part of discovery, mm -hmm. which means that people who are interested in that aspect of the core can use that as one of their core classes. And I th uh, we've had people everywhere from journalism to uh, business, to science, take the course, and I think they've learned something. I think that would be a great opportunity. Yeah. All right, thank you so much again. For more Pioneer Public Profiles, visit our website at ppuglobe.com. Thank you. Connect with The Globe on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at PPU Globe, and always online at ppuglobe.com.